Hey guys, this is Alan Stewart, and I'm going to do a little video update on the build of our Corsan 20 Mark III. So we're here in the Stewart garage, the boat building workshop. And so I'll give you a little tour of our space here. It's a two car garage. And then I'll show you what we've uh, been doing lately and what we're doing next. So this is, um, this is where we're building our 20 Mark III. It's just a two car garage. We've got the really messy tool bench on this side, uh, drill press, table saw, and then I just open the garage door when I need to cut something long. I've got the boat on the other side, obviously, and it pretty much fills up the whole space. I've got about nine inches or so there, and uh, I don't know, about two feet at the back to get around. And uh, the garage is a project in itself, but I'll try to focus on the boat. Um, over on this side is our epoxy station. Uh, I picked up this pumper used and got a rebuild kit for it in it. I've never had one before, but it really makes the uh, mixing a lot easier. And I've got up underneath there a 50 watt oil pan heater. That's like a silicone oil pan heater. And I've got that plugged into this temperature regulator that has a temperature probe that's just taped to the reservoir. So I've got it set at 88 degrees or so. And when it reaches temp, it shuts off the little block heater. And so it just cycles and it keeps the epoxy warm. It's really nice to work with. And then this was a recent addition, just something to keep all our putty knives and fillet tools. So pretty much all the stuff we're using, um, you know, mostly we're using like a three quarter to um, three quarter inch radius fillet tool um, and various putty knives for cleaning up fillets. And we reuse our little chip brushes there. We just have three cans of acetone. We got like a really dirty acetone, which is actually solidified and a, a medium acetone for an initial clean and then a final acetone. So you dip your brushes through there and by the end, the brush is all clean. And then eventually this becomes this one and we make a new fresh one. And of course we have the bikes and stuff and everything else in a regular garage. So I'll show you what we've been doing now. Um, Taylor has been doing a great job, my wife filleting all of our bunk support structure. And um, that's pretty much all done in the bunk area. Obviously our trunk is installed. We haven't glassed our ballast tank yet. There you can see the ballast tank from the forward bulkhead of the tank here, and that's the aft bulkhead of the tank. So the tank is this middle part. I'll get up on a ladder and show you a better view of that. And so that's one of the next steps is putting fiberglass cloth in the tank, and, uh, and then we'll install the baffles. But right now, today I've been working on framing up the bunk structure. And so the, we glassed all these uh, vertical plywood webs in place that make up the bunk structure first. And I'm going back in now and fitting all these cleats that are going to actually support the bunk top. And let me get around to the other side. Uh, in the plans, these are square sections of uh, pine, three quarter by three quarter. But uh, I wanted to try something different, so if I can find my scrap, I'm making them out of triangle sections. So here's my triangle section, and it's just in an effort to save weight uh, is, all, is the only reason I'm doing this. And um, I'm actually making these out of leftover pressure-treated deck boards because we just built a deck and I've got a bunch of cutoffs of this. And uh, that's a good, you know, decent material to work with. The tricky part with the gussets, the triangle section, is it's, you can't really clamp onto it. And so I'm dry fitting everything with screws. And then I'll take them all off after I label them. And we'll epoxy coat 
the long flat side, the hypotenuse side. And then uh, once that's coated with three coats, we'll coat all of these little lockers individually. And then we'll go and glue these on back where they are now. And then the top surface will be, of course, coated when we actually glue the, the bunk tops down. I've got one bunk top up here on top of the boat because I've been bringing it in and out, sort of dry fitting it. The other thing we did to our boat is um, on the Mark III, we raised the cabin height a little bit uh, last year. And um, Taylor and I decided that we didn't need that much headroom and we would actually prefer to have some extra depth to our bunk hatches. And so we raised the bunks uh, a little bit in the boat. I'll show you how much. So you can see up here at the forward bulkhead, I had a cleat across there. That was the old bunk height, and there's the old bunk height line right there that's drawn on the hull panels. So we've raised it about one and seven eighths inches or so. And kind of the limiting factor was that cutout in that uh, kind of en end of the bunk frame there. So we raised the seat, the bunk tops up to that level. And that just gives us a bit deeper uh, bunk, you know, storage hatch. And we lose some headroom, obviously, but I, I sat in it with the bunks with uh, a mock-up cushion. And I still had plenty, you know, plenty of head clearance for sitting. Um, obviously, you're not going to stand up in this boat, but you, we didn't need any more headroom. We felt we had enough headroom, so we went for the deeper bunk. So I, I actually hand cut most of these pieces out of scrap ply using the shape of the CNC cut part and then glued these in. And here is uh, the ballast tank looking aft. Um, there's another, there's another frame, another floor piece that goes here in front of the ballast tank and that's where the batteries will go. So the batteries will be like here and here. I think I'm going to have two batteries. And then there'll be a top on that. And that also will double as the step. So you'll step onto that. Sorry, I'm so close. Step onto that and then up onto the bridge deck. So I've got my companionway bulkhead just sitting there in place. And I've already glued up my beams and my companionway hatch ring lip piece and then Taylor got a nice heavy coat of epoxy on that while it was flat on the bench so that's gonna get sanded and uh, then probably a final coat and I'm waiting to put in it in until the bunks are in because the bunk extends back under there so it's easier to just drop the bunk down without that piece in the way and you'll notice that this bulkhead is open on this side and this the stock kit it's open but um, if you've seen the video of Carlito, you've seen Graham built a cooler box in his boat that takes up this bay here, the one directly forward of the cockpit logger. And so we decided to do the same because that's a good idea. And we're going to line this with foam and turn that into a cooler box. On this side, we've just left it, you know, as it is in the kit. And the idea with this is just a nice big dry storage location. It's kind of hard to access, but it's it's good for you know pushing your sleeping bag or whatnot back under there during the day where it'll stay dry and then get it out of the way of the cabin. Um, th some people have designed. I think Peter McC Peter McCrary designed some sliding uh, sliding boxes that are on rails that go back into there so that he could pull you know pull a storage box out from there that's a good idea so we'll think about that and so here I'm I'll step over the companion way so now I'm standing in the ballast tank and you'll see there's a line here for the ballast tank bulkhead which is over here this is the middle section of bulkhead number four, which is going to go 
right here is a tiny bit of a tight fit at the moment. But we're waiting to install that until after the tank is fiberglass. So we're going we're gonna to glass this whole tank as one big bathtub before we put any bunk or before we put any baffles or additional structure. So there's this piece, then there's two baffles that run longitudinally behind it and two baffles that run longitudinally there and there, I'm trying to point through the camera. Um, and those divide up the tank uh, they support the cockpit sole, which goes right up against that. This is the front of the cockpit sole. And then it jumps up, and then there's the bridge deck. This is the bridge deck across here. So they support the bottom, they support the cockpit sole, and they act as baffles in the tank. And so then turning to the back, you can see we haven't done any coating uh, in the cockpit lockers yet. Um, these, like this one for example, it's got all of its fiberglass tape, so the next thing that it'll get is uh, sand, and we'll make it, we'll sand it all nice and smooth. This bulkhead was coated before we installed it, but the hull wasn't, and the stringers haven't been coated. So we'll sand all the wood smooth, probably up to 150 grit, and then we'll do three coats, one right after the other, and that will complete this um, this locker here, and, we'll, and it'll be the same for the uh, the cockpit lockers on both sides. Uh, you can see my forward um, hatch uh, top that goes up in the front there, up in front of the bulkhead number two. And then looking aft here, I posted on the forum a few days ago, but the the forum like reset and uh, reverted to a sa uh, saved state, I guess. So I lost some of the pictures I posted, but this is my Tahatsu three and a half horse that I bought last year uh, to use on my Corson 17, but I also had it in mind for using on our 20 Mark III. And I'll get out of the boat so I can show you. The idea was, okay, the idea with that uh, was to put it in a well, which we've done. So we cut the hole for the well the other day, and you can see it sticks out the bottom about, uh, it's about a foot all the way to the bottom of the lower unit. And it, it rotates up in the well, of course. The prop clears, and then uh, when the prop is rotated the right way, it goes right up against the transom and then there'll be a plug to fill this in or if we're doing something like the Everglades Challenge of course we'll leave the motor at home. But this will be built up with with the sides to make the well just be this section and maybe the sides will be tapered so that the plug will fit in there you know like the top of a pumpkin kind of a thing and then the bottom will be shaped to the outside of the bottom. So the reason I'm trying to, to, to do it this way is a couple of reasons. The main reason is to clear up the transom so I don't have an outboard on the transom. And the reason I want that is because I've got the rudder in the center and I want to have the ability to put a self-steering uh, wind vane like Graham's got on one side, say the starboard side. And then I like to have a, a big boarding ladder and so that's going to be on the port side and I know I can get a boarding ladder that is in a tube, you know, we all saw, um, or the people who had the mess about saw Amos's cool boarding ladder, which I think is the same one that uh, Don has. Um, and it just goes into an aluminum tube that's in the boat. So you just grab the end of it and pull it out and drop it down and it's done. But I wanna have something more akin to a set of steps. So I'm imagining a thing that that's built into the transom that flips all the way out like that. And then you've got like a, a tread, a tread, a tread, a tread, and it's sunk into the boat. So you might have like a tread here, a tread here, and then a tread. So you can literally kind of like walk up the steps right into the cockpit. And that'll make it easier for people to board, but also I'm imagining that the dogs will be able to use that. Um, to get back on board like if we're at anchor and the dogs want to go swimming that's the idea there 
Uh, the other thing that's nice about the motor in the well, I think, is uh, it's uh, more secure. And so, you know, if you're at a parking lot or whatever, um, the motor can be mostly out of sight. Um, and also having it on center line uh, makes steering a little nicer uh, just because you've got it right in front of the rudder. It is a little more complicated with reverse and I talked about that on the forum a little bit. This motor doesn't have a reverse gear and so I've been playing with it to see what I might see if I might want to modify it. I've already taken the tiller off of it because the tiller was just kind of getting in the way when I rotate the motor into reverse. So I'm playing with the idea of making some kind of horizontal wheel on the top to, you know, to steer the, the motor. And I've got to come up with another control for the throttle because the tiller had the throttle on board. And I've removed the fuel tank because I think I'm going to have, you know, a little fuel tank maybe back here or in the cockpit locker and just remote it to the fuel in the outboard. And it's got its own little fuel pump, so I don't think that'll be a problem. And underneath the uh, cockpit sole behind the tank, so the ballast tank stops here, then there's two longitudinal uh, uh, baffles or uh, I guess they're partial bulkheads that run fore and aft. And they, those support the aft section of the cockpit sole and divide up the bottom. And those are over there on the bench. So those will go in, you know, not too... Uh, in the not too distant future, but I've got to figure out how to wall off the front of the well and uh, that sort of thing. The transom is got the beams glued onto it recently, and it's dry fitted right now with wires and clamps just about right where I want it. And so it's ready to get glued, but it doesn't have any glue on it yet. So that's about all that we've got going on right now. Um, uh, you can see I'm using lots of drywall screws for this work up here and then just a straight edge. Um, I've got uh, these these gussets on the side of the hull, of course, are beveled, so that's taking a little bit longer. But I'm just holding them on with screws through the outside, and that's how I'm going to hold them in place while the glue dries. And uh, then I'll have to come back in and, you know, putty the holes in. But... I think that uh, putting the holes in for screws is less work than trying to get the piece lined up with a clamp and then you know sometimes it slides out of place after you stop looking at it and then you come back and it's not in the right place. So I've just been using screws. Um, I'll show you the front up here. It's a pretty tight squeeze around the boat. I've already got some of these parts, these cleats here fitted that will glue to the hull and the forward bulkhead uh, across there. And those will support the forward um, hatch. I um, can't remember what we called that part, the forward hatch uh, piece or whatever. Um, so the bunks will stop at that cleat there and then this is like additional storage. And I'll probably put a Bexin screw port right there because that will gain access to the space that's underneath the anchor locker. You can see there's a panel there that the anchor sits on and underneath that is just a cavity so um, we can access that space if we put a hatch down here. And then this cutout here is for another screw port just on the side of the tabernacle and that will allow ventilation into the cabin. And I think it was uh, Richard on his 17 Mark III, he put one on the other side as well, which is a nice idea, but I think I'm going to have a bowsprit on the boat. And so the bowsprit would, would land on the forward bulkhead right there. So that's, that would take up that side. And you can see the lines here for our tabernacle, which we haven't started yet. And looking down here, of course, we've got the dovetail joint and some tack welds. Obviously, we haven't done anything to the outside of the boat yet. We're all we're just still working on the inside. But the boat is sitting on cradles, uh, and you know the cradle frame as designed. I did design what I thought was a clever pivoting. Uh, you know, you push down on this, and there's a lever action over there with a K 
caster wheel and I was thinking it would be cool to be able to have you know a lever you push and then the whole boat lifts off the garage floor and you can roll it around but in practice I've never been, never gotten that to be useful yet here's my caster down there it works okay but now that the boats on it it's actually not quite enough leverage so um, you know um, probably not really worth it but when it's warm outside I'll probably figure out a way to roll the boat out into the driveway so we can sand or paint or whatever it is we want to do. And over here I've got our shear strakes laid out. Um, I was thinking about, you know, getting those fitted up and glued maybe today or tomorrow. And so those uh, will wrap around the side of the hull along here like that all the way to the bow and then the ports will be between there and there and there, there should be a third port uh, between these two the 20 was always intended to have three ports uh, but they didn't end up in the kit if you've got a 20 <laughs> kit without a, the middle port uh, i think my parents have that um, get in touch with us so we can send you uh, some instructions on cutting it out but uh, I do think we'll have three ports. And uh, oh, one other thing I'll show you that I think is pretty cool. Um, you know, all these parts being CNC cut, we've got, we've got the, um, the companionway bulkhead, which is I think bulkhead number three. Then we've got the aft hanging knee, the forward hanging knee, bulkhead number two and bulkhead number one. And all of these have notches for the deck beams and if you line yourself up with these notches I mean they're just as on as it could be which I was it's impressive when you see it because uh, you know looking right down the line there you can see that that deck beam is just gonna fall right into if I can hold the camera it's just gonna fall right into there so that's a cool check for uh, you know the boat twisting but also everything being in alignment and then you know like here we've got this uh, beam on bulkhead number one proud because it's going to get beveled for this um, for that uh, in whale that's going to run around the top uh, of the shear strike to support the outer edge of the of the uh, deck so that's uh, I guess that's about it um, if you've got any questions, uh, I'm going to post this on the forum, so stick it in the comments or on the forum itself, and I'll get back to it. Yeah, that happens a few times a day. Uh, until that's glued in, it's probably going to keep happening. But uh, it's too tempting not to dry fit stuff, so um, yeah, I should probably put some screws in that. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll... Uh, Maybe try to keep doing some video updates because it's easier to do it this way and I can give a lot more information um, and uh, easier than, you know, putting pictures into the, into the forum every time. So let me know if that works and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.